Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Yeah, I was watching the a couple of the clips, man, that you had put up and and you mentioned this prominent Asian person from your childhood. Yeah. Who is this person? I want to know, man. I want to know. <laughs> um, Sonny or Sean is his actual name. We call him Sonny. Uh, but he was he worked with my dad. He's my dad's friend. And he's he's the one that kind of introduced me to, to MMA. He had always he knew I wrestled and stuff like that. And even before I started fighting, he wanted me to stop by, you know, to try the jujitsu stuff. And then he actually had like a team. Uh, and I joined the team and that was my first MMA team. Uh, but yeah, I think he's from uh, Laos. Laos, uh, okay. Laos. Yeah. 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 Are there many yeah. Laosian people in, in South Dakota? That's where you grew up, right? Um, yeah, there's there's a community for sure. Um, that's the interesting thing about I, I'm from uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and in Sioux Falls, there's just there's it's pretty diverse. I mean, it's predominantly white, but it, it's still diverse at the same time. Yeah, I would never expect it. You know, what I mean, to ha- to see a Laotian person in South Dakota. You know, what oh, I mean? yeah. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, well, yeah. They do like the Laos New Year and everything like that. Are there there in Sioux Falls? So. Awesome, awesome. What did La- does Laos have like a particular martial art? Was there? Because I don't know about. That. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I just know he liked fighting. He was into it. He got us into it, and you know, we did whatever he said, and it, it worked out. He's the guy to blame for you to. For you going down oh, this yeah. path. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hold stone. Yep. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, and and uh the gorilla gang. What is the gorilla gang? Uh it's <laughs> so uh my coach Vinny Lopez, it's kind of his uh it's it's our big guy group, I guess. It's it's team elevation, but it's it's our big guy group and we call it gorilla gang, I guess. It was established before I got there. I don't I don't know everything behind it, but uh but yeah, when you look at the pictures and you see how big everybody is, it's it, it makes sense. Uh, we even have uh, Brian Shaw in there now, and he's you know world's strongest man or whatever. Uh, superhuman size, it's insane. Yeah, Brian Shaw. Like, what is it like training with him? <laughs> it, it, uh, as you can imagine, it's like wrestling with a house, but. Uh, he's he's one of the nicest guys ever, and and a really good partner. Super careful and everything like that. Um, so yeah, and I've I've gotten a few rounds with him, and it's it gives me an opportunity to kind of work stuff that I don't work with with other people. Uh, having him pin me on the wall and and see if I can get off, and uh, it, it's getting off the wall and a guy like that is diff, way different than anybody else. It when his elbows are the size of you know you know people's legs. It's it, it it can be kind of interesting, but it's it's a good it's it's good training. It, it's fun. Well, I don't think you're gonna run into anybody stronger than him, right? In octagon. I hope not. I really hope. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I do, there's something wrong. Yeah, no, that, that dude is strong. He's he's one massive human being and super strong, and he's he's super dedicated. Uh, fighting's not his his thing, but he he agreed to a fight and. Um, he's fighting like a, pr- a pretty, pretty big guy as well. Um, but it, it's, it, and they're fighting, uh, I forget where they're fighting, but it, it's overseas somewhere. Um, it's, it's supposed to be a pretty big fight. So it's kind of a cool deal. Yeah. No, Hey, nowhere else better to prepare with, with the, with the gorilla gang. You know what I mean? Like you guys, oh, yeah. you guys in the picture, you guys are all massive individuals, but if you stand in a picture together, you just look like some regular people. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, especially with him, uh, like Curtis Blades, he makes Curtis look little, which isn't the case at all. So Nice, nice, man. It's, it's great to see you guys have a, a cool little group out there. And uh, your fight, man, coming up February 10th, Marcine, Pracnio. What are your thoughts? Something like on? that. Uh, he's he's a decent fighter. He's good. I mean, he's obviously in the UFC, so uh, he's not a slouch. He's super tough, tough Polish dude. I've I've been down that road with the Polish guys, with, and you know Jan Blakowicz. Uh, I underestimated him. I won't underestimate another Polish guy. 
Uh, so <laughs> I'm definitely preparing hard for this fight and, and we'll definitely be ready and expect him to be tough. And I've watched his fights. He is tough. He, he doesn't really have any quit in him, but um, everybody has their breaking point as well. Uh, so we're definitely going to utilize my strengths and, and capitalize on his weaknesses. One thing about him is, you know, his fight against William Knight, where he just leg kicked him the whole time. So, yeah. you know, he can stick to the game plan. You know what I mean? Like, that's a guy that will stick to the game plan. Yeah. It's it, when William Knight's a guy with who allows it to. Um, you know, he, he was a super nice guy, good guy. But uh, when it came to fighting, he kind of, I don't know if he was in his head or what, cause it, or whatever, because I fought him as well. And that's another thing. Uh, I was able to stick to my game plan as well. And William Knight didn't make any adjustments. Um, and so, and me as an opponent for Marcin, he's, he's definitely going to have to make some adjustments and I will make adjustments as well. Uh, so it should be a, a pretty interesting fight and it, it, it looks on paper, it looks pretty good for me. He's a striker, karate guy, um, wrestler can strike a little bit too. Um, so, it, but at the end of the day, it's a fight and I don't want to give away too much of my game plan, but, uh, wrestling is, is the big, big thing here that he doesn't have a whole lot of, of, and we've been doing some studying and stuff. And that's one thing I really think I can capitalize on in this fight. And, uh, you know, your last fight against Kennedy, man, um, that was a mm. while ago, you know, and, and when I watched yeah. that fight live, you just weren't moving the, the way you usually move. I just mm -hmm. noticed that, like, you know, like a little bit into the fight, you know, was there an injury? What, what was going on there? No injury, nothing like that. Uh, it's, <laughs> he was a tall guy. He was a tall guy. And uh, Jung was as well. Um, but John kind of welcomed the wrestling. John tried to out wrestle me, so that it made it a little bit, little bit easier for me. And then <clears throat> thinking that I could do some of the same stuff with with Kennedy that I did with John was kind of my biggest mistake. And making some small errors uh, and just kind of being too comfortable, too relaxed instead of kind of going after him like I did with John, because uh, John was another, I, he was another tall guy as well. So. Um, I figured it would be a similar fight, and obviously every fight is different, and I have to treat it that way. Uh, so, yeah, it was – yeah, no injuries or nothing like that. It was just kind of one of those nights where it, it didn't quite go my way, and I didn't uh, I didn't capitalize on what I could have. And, and, you know, with the time off, like, was that something that you decided on after that fight? It's just like, let me step away for a little while and, and go back home and chill out and then return when, um, I'm, when I'm ready? Not really. Uh, just the timing, everything didn't work out for a few fights. I think I was supposed to fight in the fall. Uh, and I had like a vacation and stuff planned. I mean, the, went, went to Disney, Disneyland in California with the family. So that was, that was super cool. Um, and yeah. And, and much needed time off as well. Uh, that, that's one of the most important things is just uh, spending time with my family, getting those quality moments in and stuff like that and and you know the fighting's cool but that can't be my only focus especially with i have a beautiful family at home and i love them so much and i know they love me so I have to spend that quality time uh for sure yeah without a doubt man especially when you got kids that are growing up while you're pursuing yeah. a career you gotta spend time yeah, I, especially in, in your situation where you can take a little bit of time away and, and mm -hmm. shut off your career a little bit and then return when you want to. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and it, and it makes sense too, after a loss, uh, like that kind of reevaluate a little bit, get stronger in the areas that need to get stronger, uh, take that step back and just kind of really evaluate what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, what's the next step and, and how we can grow. And that's with you know, myself and, and my team and everything like that. And coming into this camp, I was uh, did some traditional wrestling with a, a college in Sioux Falls, Augustana University. Uh, the, the assistant coach there, Chisholm Fink, I I grew up with him. Grew up about like a mile from him out in Harrisburg, South Dakota, and so I have a good relationship with him. And I was able to come um, sign up as a volunteer coach for the team and and work out with those guys and get some good work and kind of get back to my roots and 
and you know that, that's how all this started how this all this mma started was from my wrestling and me being able to be a dominant wrestler and do some of the things that i that i used to do that was strictly from wrestling that made me a great fighter uh and over the years and this happens to to most fighters or wrestlers or whatever you want to get better you want to do all the the cool stuff the the high kicks the head kicks and the spinning stuff and whatever uh you kind of fall in love with that striking aspect of it and and that's just not not quite me um i do have some good tricks and and some stuff uh but wrestling is where i win my fights yeah yeah man you know I guess as a fighter that's been in the game for a long time, because you've been in your, this is, I think your 17th fight or 18th fight in the UFC. So you've been around, yeah, you some, faced the, the who's who. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's my, I think my seventh year in the UFC. So, um, and that's huge. That's a big thing. A lot of people don't make it that far in the UFC. And that's something I can be proud of. Um, and at the same time, it, it I have so much more to do and I, I feel like I'm just getting to a point where I'm understanding things and, and being able to prove stuff to myself and to my coaches um, of what I can do and what I'm capable of. And, and, and like I said, I just need to take a little bit of a step back and, and reevaluate a little bit. And, and I think we're on track now and, and we're definitely going to find out on uh, February 10th. Zach. He's fighting on the same night as you, I believe. And uh, yeah, you know, yep. when you have a camp, when you have a camp, a training camp, simultaneously on the same night, you guys are fighting together. Mm -hmm. Is there something to that? You know, what I mean, I'm not talking about the result, but I mean, just like heading into a fight, like the confidence building off each other. You know, what I mean, because it seems like you guys are very close. Yeah, um, I think it, it's it's a unique deal and and kind of a cool deal especially with Zach. Zach's been a professional athlete for a while now. He played in the NFL. Um, so, and he's just kind of just getting started in, in MMA and he's in the UFC already. Um, so, so that alone is, is huge. Um, and that just shows how, how good of a professional athlete he is and, and he can really do anything, but his professionalism and, and the way that he goes about the sport and, and, his learning and, and understanding of everything. I, I definitely can take away stuff from him in that aspect, as well as he can take away stuff from me and my, my wrestling um, pedigree and, and also just being around the sport for so long or in the UFC for so long. So it's a really good, good relationship. And we push each other really hard in the gym and, and it, it's a, it's a good understanding. So being able to go into battle with somebody like that and, and we're, you know, and, we're taking the team with us too. So it's like, it, it's just another day in the office. Yeah. The gorilla gang is all heading in. They're going to be all the, on the plane together. Right? The gorilla gang. Yeah. <laughs> the gorilla gang. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the expectations for yourself to bounce back, right. That's, you know, that's only mm -hmm. on you. You know I mean? That's how you, what is your perspective on this fight and, and how you want it to, it to play out? Um, it's a fight. It is what it is. And, the minute I start putting the extras on it, oh, I have to do this. Uh, if I don't win this fight, I'm going to get cut. Um, trying to be something that I've always wanted to be, and and all all the stuff, right? All the the, the chatter that goes on in the brain that goes around on uh, on the internet. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a fight. At the end of the day, it's a fight. It is what it is. I'm going to show up doing what I know how to do. Doing fighting a style that I love to, to fight and that that works. And if, if I follow my game plan and and do what works for me and have fun out there, um, I can be a world champion and I know that. Uh, but it, all it takes is just a little bit of uh, focus and concentration, a little bit of extra work, stuff like that. Like I said, focusing on myself and, and what I can be and not what maybe other people want me to be or what I have this dream in my head of being this crazy striker that can move move around you know like a izzy izzy or something like that you know it's just like it's just not me all that stuff looks fun but um i'm just a hard-nosed wrestler that that can go and i'm tough and you know that that's that's what kind of works for me um you know uh 
like you said, you're not thinking about like the, the like the stipulations around the fight, right? Because I was talking to another UFC fighter, and they just signed like a five fight deal, and he put oh, okay. it into perspective for me, saying that you know it sounds good in the headlines, mm-hmm. but really I have five one fight contracts with the UFC, and that's the reality of yeah. it. Do, do a lot mm-hmm. of fighters look at it like that? I mean, they probably should a little bit, um, mm-hmm. but. At the end of the day, if you're showing up and you're working hard and you're putting on fights, they're probably not going to cut you in the middle of your contract. Um, I've been there where I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm safe from from getting cut or not. Um, my last fight didn't look good, and and some of those same fights, uh, I got a new contract and a and a pay raise. So it's it's just like the effort you put in, and the type of person that you are, and and what you can do for the UFC and what your future may look like in the UFC. If they can make money off you um, and you're a decent person and there's going to be just something, right? Just something they like about you. Um, and at the, and if you fight hard at the end of the day, they you know, you shouldn't have any issues. Without a doubt, man, we need the good guys. You know, the guys that are not out there talking wild <laughs> on the internet, you know, guys like you, there's a bunch of them in the know. UFC, right? They just train and fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, you know the anti-social <laughs> guys that are just <laughs> up with, um, and that's that's another thing too. Uh, a lot of people kind of get it caught caught up in in the social media and having to act a different way in the media. And I try to just be myself, and I try my best to <laughs> do the whole social media platform and and you know bring myself into that and let people know me but it, it's being on the internet every day like that posting every day and worrying about that that's just not me um i'll 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 post when i feel like it's a genuine thing to post or whatever but i'm not an influencer i probably never will be i'm just not cut out like that maybe i have to hire somebody which is i've been told to do but um it's just like i'm, I'm not ready yet uh i i want it to be me on there and and you know not something that it's fake. Uh, if I hire somebody, it's it's a kind of a fake deal, you know. It's it's not always going to be my genuine thoughts on things or my genuine outlook on life. I have an idea. It's just an idea. Like mm-hmm. you, you like to hunt, you know. I do you're like hunting hunt. out in Dakota. You know, I think there's mm-hmm. a show right there. You, a cameraman, <laughs> take them hunting. Uh, film all the content there's a show i think you could put post online like on your ig man. i'm just an idea yeah. you know i think it'd be cool no it's, you'd like. it's a great idea um and i've i've kind of done i've done like a little segment before where uh yeah. my friend isaac schubert he he's a videographer and really good with the social media and everything like that and, and he was living in sioux falls he was going to school at uh university of sioux falls and then he ended up moving to minnesota so I kind of lost my guy, but you really do need somebody that can kind of just follow you around and, and yeah, just video and get, get the content. Um, and that kind of, you know, that could have been a good deal too. But like I said, he moved away and I just haven't really connected with anybody closely yet. Uh, I know there's plenty of people out there and plenty of people in Super as well. Um, and, and I know there's like extra money in it for me and everything like that. And, and that might be a chapter in my life here coming soon i'm not sure um you know i might get into it and start loving it and whatever i don't i don't know uh especially if i can get and show content that that's that's me um yeah but then at the same time when i think that's perfectly you i think that's perfectly you you in the elements it is (laughs) but (laughs) then at the same time though doing all that stuff takes away from my personal experience in nature and with my dog or hunting or anything like that i'm worrying about getting content which is nothing nothing's wrong with that and like i said i might eventually do that um but i do have moments where like oh i should i should post this or i should uh take a video and then i'm like ah this moment's too beautiful for for everybody else that's not here you know you gotta experience because i especially when I'm climbing mountains and, and doing stuff like that, there's be a little bit of a footage of it or, or pictures and stuff, but you know, it's, it's being in that moment. I love to be in the moment, especially when I'm outdoors. And, and sometimes when I'm picking up my phone and I'm like, ah, 
you know, to be good content, but this is a special moment for me. And, and I use the outdoors to unwind and connect and, and, you know, it's, it's a personal uh, experience for me. So, and it's, it's usually pretty special, you know, even in South Dakota where it's just cornfields and whatever, there's just, it's pretty flat. There's cornfields, but the sunsets are beautiful, especially in the fall after hunting. I'm just like, no, this is my moment. Uh, so <laughs> it might be kind of backwards in today's world of looking at things, but maybe I'm just an old soul. I don't know. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the old school mentality of before phones. That's what people, yeah. everybody thought, right? Like I come from the era of like when there was no phone, so you could go camping. Mm -hmm. No one could get a hold of you, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. It's like if I take the phone and I'm trying to film everything, it's just like it takes away from like me enjoying me being mm -hmm. here, you know, me enjoying the moment at this moment, you know what I mean? And that's what everybody yeah. always tells you, right? They're like, enjoy the moment, enjoy what yeah. lasts. But know, nobody does. Like, no, everybody's <laughs> like trying to film whatever there's, it's like there's a hundred cameras, a hundred phones filming the same thing. It's like you can yeah. just put away your phone. And just watch it yourself, you know what I mean? And let yeah. everybody else fit. It's just extra work. I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But, um, Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in right now. But um, yeah, that's kind of my my philosophy on things. Yeah. Uh, well, I so. appreciate it. Man. I appreciate your <laughs> philosophy. And uh, maybe one day, you know, we'll we'll get that show. But before then, man, you still got many many fights left in the UFC. The next one, February 10th. Yeah. UFC Fight Night Las Vegas. Devin, thank you so much, man, for taking the time and uh, oh, no uh, all the best in the rest of the camp and in the fight, and, and we'll speak soon again. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Always a good time.